Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this is my game dev review of Dyson Sphere Program, a game made with Unity. It's developed by YouthCat Studio, which is a small five-person studio, so it's very impressive when you see the scale of the game. Here I will do a brief review of the game, and then give you my thoughts from my point of view as a game developer, as well as give you some tips for how you can improve your own games. By the way, this is my second game dev review, and I've made a playlist and a Steam Curator page to group them all. My goal is to continue making these to give you some great game design tips using these games as an example. Check out all the reviews in the Steam Curator page or on the playlist. So, Dyson Sphere Program is a sci-fi factory automation game. You control your mecha and start off manually mining basic resources. Then you do some research and start building some machines to do the mining for you. You take those base materials and turn them into more and more complex items. Then eventually, when you start needing some more space to build or some more exotic resources, you will leave your home and begin colonizing other planets. And just like the name of the game implies, eventually you start needing more and more energy, so you build a Dyson Sphere to harvest energy directly from the sun. The game has an excellent sense of progression. You're never stopped, there's always something to do, some new research to unlock, a new item to craft, or some optimization to be done. Visually, the game looks great, it's got this nice cartoony look with high saturation, all the planets are nicely round with some great terrain and some great atmospheric effects. The stars also look visually very impressive. Everything from neutron stars to red dwarfs to black holes, they all look great. The look of the game is really very inviting and relaxing, which works well with all of the automation happening in the background. It is a complex game, but also a somewhat relaxing game because there's no combat, so there's really not many penalties to not making things 100% efficient. And on the other hand, it's really satisfying to build the perfect production line and just watch all of the machines working perfectly. And the scale of the game is obviously massive. The game is randomly generated, so the first thing you do is generate a random universe. You can make it really massive or relatively small. Each of these stars has multiple planets orbiting around them, so even the smallest universe is already pretty massive. As I said, there's all kinds of stars, from neutron stars to white dwarfs to black holes. So if you're into astronomy, then the game is just fun to be around in. Everything is accurately simulated, all the planets have their orbits along with their moons, visually the stars and black holes look great, some planets are tightly locked, and so on. Then on the story, the game actually has a bit of story, at least relative to a simulation management game. I mean, you don't see much of it, but the core concept behind it is actually quite interesting. The idea is that humanity now spends more time in virtual reality as opposed to the real world, but with more and more people, naturally, they need more and more energy to run that virtual reality. So it's a simple concept, but works great for giving the game a reason to explore the cosmos and gather more and more energy and resources. If you enjoy factory automation games like Factorio, Production Line, or Satisfactory, then you'll certainly enjoy this one. They had a successful Kickstarter last year, where they raised $15,000, and now in just the first week they already sold over 350,000 copies. This is a very inspiring story of a small studio finding massive monumental success with an excellent game. So if you're a fan of this type of game, then this is an absolute must play. Now here's my thoughts from my point of view as a game developer, as well as some takeaways for you to improve your own games. I will go through each point, highlighting what I think the game does well and what lessons you can learn from it. The game is out in early access, but it's already extremely stable and feature-rich. I've played it for over 30 hours and I haven't encountered any bugs. This is definitely one of those games where you can easily get a ton of enjoyment right now and then play it again in a few years after the full release. Even performance has not been an issue. In late game, with tons and tons of machines and thousands of items moving around, the game still runs extremely smooth. So as a developer, if you decide to go with early access, then this is something that you need to be careful with. Gone are the days of players looking at early access games and accepting tons of bugs or no content. If you launch into early access, then this is your competition. An extremely well-made game with already tons and tons of content. Now, the good news is that if you do do it right, then you will be massively rewarded just like this game. Thanks to the success of this very first week, these developers already have more than enough funds to fully build their complete vision over the next few years. Also, I'm quite impressed with how the game is built with Unity. I remember a long time ago when I first played Factorio, I remember researching and coming to the conclusion that in order to support such a huge amount of objects, it really needed a custom engine. But fast forward to now a few years later and this is possible. As you might know, Unity has been pushing hard for performance these past few years. The dot stack has the potential for extreme performance and I wonder if this game is using any part of it or maybe some custom ECS solution. Either way, the massive scale combined with excellent performance is a very inspiring feat of engineering. 
I want to get back into that soon, and when I do, I will definitely be experimenting with making a minigame on this scale, just to be able to see how far we can push it. One tiny excellent thing about the game is how the inventory splitting works. You right click and then move the mouse left to right to select what amount you want to split. It is a much better and much more intuitive system than what games usually do, which is pop up a window where then you input an amount or spam the increase or decrease buttons. That's an example of a tiny tiny thing that greatly improves the feel of the game. I just wish this same system was also added to the replicator, using a slider would be much better than spamming the plus or minus buttons, or at least add the ability to hold down the button. And by the way, if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing and hitting the like button, it really helps out the channel. Another thing that the game does great is, like I said, the entire star system is simulated as you're playing. So right in the beginning, when you're in the very first planet, you actually see the star making daytime and nighttime depending on its position on the sky. Adding a day-night cycle is usually relatively easy, doesn't have to be 100% accurate like this game, and by adding it, you will make your game feel a lot more believable. You can queue up actions, and one very good decision about it is how it locks the camera as you hold down shift. If the camera did keep following the player, then it would be very tricky to click exactly where you want it. So when you add actions and abilities to your games, make sure the player can use them without unnecessary frustration. Another tiny but very useful thing is what you can see on the upper right corner. You see the version as well as the scene name of the account playing. This can be very useful, especially for early access games. If you see a video on YouTube showcasing some sort of bug, you can verify the version and then know if you've already fixed that bug or not. Like I said, this is very useful especially for early access games or games that are in constant development. Feel free to put any debug data in the corner so you can essentially get bug reports just by watching people play your game on YouTube. When you open the inventory, you see the commands for how to interact with it. It's always helpful to give the player a reminder of all the mechanics you have in your game rather than just showing them once in the tutorial and never mentioning it again. For example, I know that I forgot the commands instantly and looked at the tutorial many many times over my playthrough. This is also visible when you're doing other actions, like for example placing down conveyor belts. So if possible, give the player reminders of all the actions they can take. Just make sure you don't do it in an annoying way. After the first time, just show them at the corner of the screen and not always as some flashy thing on top. One of the things I do wish the game had was a smaller view of the replicator. In the beginning of the game, you will be doing a lot of the crafting manually, and in order to see the progress, you can only see it with the replicator window open. This window is pretty big, so it's quite annoying to keep it open at all times. It would be great if it just had a small widget showcasing the replicator queue so you could easily see it at a glance. Or maybe the developers made that an intentional choice to discourage manual crafting. If so, then personally I don't think this decision achieves the desired effect other than annoying the player in the very beginning of the game. Remember that most players don't play games to completion, in fact very few actually complete games, so make sure the start of your game is the best it can be, otherwise people will never see all the cool stuff that you place at the end. Always keep in mind what the player will spend most of their time doing. If the player is spending most of the time looking at an annoying window, then that's a problem. The simple solution here is a smaller window just showing the current progress without occupying tons of space. That would let the player quickly see it at a glance without also removing the option for the full window. Another thing that I wish the game had was some sort of indication as to whether or not the player is in range. This is not a god game, you are indeed moving an individual character, and if you are too far then you cannot inspect the building, you have to move closer to see it, but there is no indication to the player if the distance is enough, so either it works or doesn't. Whenever possible, you should always make sure that the player actions have some sort of feedback or some sort of response. The player should always be aware of the fact that the game received or did not receive a certain input. In this case, adding a warning every time it failed would be way too annoying, but adding a slight visual indicator, like for example just changing the visual bounding box from white to green, that would go a long way to making the game feel just a tiny bit more responsive. Another great design decision is how dismantling objects is free. Usually, you actually want your demolish to have a certain cost in order to encourage the player to think carefully the first time they build something, but in games like this one where the primary focus is on optimizing your supply routes and increasing efficiency, in this case, you really want the player to not be punished for reworking and rebuilding how their production lines work. So if you want to encourage careful thinking, make demolish have a cost. On the other hand, if you want to encourage experimentation, make demolish be free. However, there is one somewhat negative thing when you're dismantling objects. There's no confirmation whatsoever, if you click it gets dismantled. 
If it is a building with items inside, you get the items placed in your inventory, but if you have no space, then they are simply lost forever. And another thing that compounds this issue is that when you enter the build mode, it does a slight zoom out, which contributes to clicking on the wrong thing. I mentioned previously how the camera stops moving when you queue up actions, which lets you click where you want. And here we see the problem with not doing that. It greatly increases the chances of a misclick. On the one hand, I get why there's no confirmation. You want dismantling to be as seamless as possible. But on the other hand, accidentally removing a building is always annoying and losing items is always terrible. My solution here would be to remove the automatic zoom out when entering build mode in order to prevent misclicks and to add a tiny confirmation box on top of the mouse position if the number of items was large or complex. That way you could easily remove conveyor belts without issues, but removing a building with expensive items inside would require confirmation. Whenever you have actions that can lead to somewhat serious permanent consequences, like for example losing a bunch of items, you should always ask the player for confirmation. Another excellent tiny thing, when you're playing, the correct way to rotate the camera is by holding down the middle mouse button, However, you might forget that and actually try rotating by holding the right mouse button. If you do this, then the game notices that, and if you try doing it for a few seconds, it shows a pop-up telling you the correct way to rotate the camera. This is an excellent way to teach the player. If while doing your own playtesting, you find that your testers intuitively do an action different than the intended, you can either change the action or do this and listen to the incorrect action to make a pop-up to remind the player of the correct action. Right now, the game doesn't feature any combat, but they're planning to add it in a future update. I've played the game for over 30 hours and I didn't feel the lack of combat at all. There's more than enough to do with building a huge factory and setting up all the supply chains on the whole universe. So that brings a very important game design question. When making your own games, you have to remember that more mechanics and features is not necessarily better. Sometimes, adding more mechanics really just downloads your design and makes the game worse. In this example, right now the game is excellent. If you add a subpar combat system on top, then that will possibly take the player away from the good part of building the factories and make the game actually worse. But of course, it is also impossible that they implement it in such a way that complements the building and doesn't distract from it. So the lesson to you is more mechanics aren't necessarily better, and if you do add some new feature, make sure it actually improves the game. As usual, prototyping is always your friend. So I look forward to playing this game again in the full release to see how they ended up implementing combat. Alright, so those are my thoughts on Dyson Sphere Program, a game made with Unity. I definitely love playing this one, it's really my kind of game. If you're a fan of factory automation management games, then this is a must play. As a Unity developer, it is excellent to have this game as an example for the kind of scale that is possible to achieve with the engine. By the way, this is my second game dev review and I've made a playlist and a Steam Creator page to group them all. My goal is to continue making these to give you some great game design tips using these games as examples. Check out all of the reviews in the Steam Curator page or on the playlist. If you enjoyed the video and found my thoughts on game design helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.